Welcome back to New Day. And uh, of course, it's Thursday, so you know that we will be discussing pensions. Last week, we had an interesting um, discussion with Della Zumanu from Pensions Alliance. And he's back here with us, a very faithful guest, always on time. <laughs> Good to see you again, Della. Thank you for having me. And I think me. the education is going down very well. A lot of people are getting educated. Mm. Uh, you know, they realize that there are certain things they need to do and also take interest in their own pensions. Okay. All right, so we want to continue today. This time we want to look at um, sports personalities, the creative um, arts industry, showbiz, and how they can also benefit from insurance. Okay, so how do they get involved for starters? Um, thank you for this area. You know, they, they will be classified under the informal sector. Okay. And we have what we call the group personal pension schemes, which falls under the third tier. For them, they because they don't do tier one and tier two because one. Um, okay, even for the sports people, I mean, uh, the, especially football, if they earn regular, they are employed with teams and they earn regular salary, then they can join the formal sector schemes because their clubs are registered companies. Yes. I believe they pay taxes mm -hmm. and they are expected. In fact, you see, there's a point. Some of them think that because we don't see them as regular, regular companies and they are just sports and clubs and stuff like that, they do not see themselves in the mainstream. But they are supposed to. First, they are employed and they pay them salary every month. The law expects them to pay tier one and tier two for those footballers. And it's an interesting area that I believe we may have to spend time with a GFA and some of their committees that are interested in the welfare of players and teams to find out because you'll be surprised that a lot of them do not even earn salaries. I mean, from some of the stories I hear on the radio mm -hmm. and stuff like that, they are not on regular salaries. They are paid us and when they win matches and stuff like that. That will then decide where we put them. If they are not on regular salaries and they are paid us and when they win matches weekly and stuff like that, then they will fall comfortably in the informal sector okay. within the, the, the tier three where we can, we can look at a scheme that will fit their purpose in the sense that you see, it's all about contributing into the future. So that if you are not paid on a monthly basis, but you are paid somehow, there's a certain trend. Mm -hmm. So you can do weekly payments or you can do quarter payments or you can do even yearly payments. And those payments are good enough to take care of you in the future. Then we can look at it and create a scheme for it. That's why the law allows what we call the personal group personal schemes or personal group schemes, where we're looking at sectors where they, 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 are, they are individuals, but they have associations. So if we take the musicians... Musica, for example. Mm -hmm. Musica, from my understanding, is an association of musicians and artists and what have you come together. And I know in recent times they've had such a strong association where they're organizing events and you're seeing them very openly and yeah. stuff like that. What it means is that they have to create the opportunity for them to set up or they have to talk to their membership to see the need to contribute into a pension scheme. And the law gives them a way by which they can be catered for. So this law especially has taken care of the informal sector very, very consciously. Unlike the other pension uh, laws and acts that we had, we did not intentionally create anything for the informal sector. This law sought to do that and has done that. And so I want to say that those who are in that kind of sector no longer have an excuse not to begin to contribute into their pension. But are they? Do you see a growing interest? Yes. You see... Before, people didn't even want to hear about pensions. They thought that was some distant matter. Yeah. Uh, what is this? If, if I am, I'm working on my own, I don't have to depend on pensions. People thought that pensions were for government workers, so to speak, and that they are the people who need it when they are on vacation because they are not paid well or whatever. And so they have to depend on government, or they work for government, so when they retire, government has to take care of them. That's why they are paid pensions. But I will tell you that as we, education is going on with, us, with the new law, People are beginning to see pension as any other thing you plan for yourself, like planning to get a house, mm -hmm. like planning to get a car. You are planning to build a future for yourself beyond your working life. And so I can, I can tell you that people are getting interested in it. And interestingly, when it comes to the sports area, I met uh, Tony Bafo, I think like a month ago. And we started a discussion, because I know he does stuff with footballers. Yeah. And so I started a discussion with him on pensions. And I was impressed to hear that they actually have started some kind of a pensions scheme for players and stuff like that. But my understanding is I think it's more of a private thing, not yeah. under the new law, the three tiers. But I would want to advise that 
it, they are even for the players or the individuals in those schemes for the for they themselves is important that they get those schemes under the NPRA's uh, regulation so that if you as a player or as an individual in those schemes you fall into trouble or there's a problem with your scheme you can be sure that the NPRA will stand in for you okay. and you know make sure that you are not cheated I'm not saying that they are going to cheat them but there are cases where you know these schemes are not properly managed because there are no people overseeing how it's done. It's an individual who says, oh, you know what, you can be putting money down when you are old, you can... I mean, these things are there. They are not under the NPR regulations. So I would want to say, of course, I'll pick up that discussion with him again so that we can see how we can regularize it and make it come and be registered under the NPR scheme of uh, rules and regulations so that they would have a, a more regulated scheme that they can rely okay. on. Okay, I'm tempted to go back to the uh, the clubs, the football clubs. Yeah, For instance, Kumasi Asante Kotoko and Hansel Pro yeah. are, are supposedly biggest clubs in Ghana yeah. who really haven't achieved anything. <laughs> I just had to throw that one. But this one, I think it should be on Diva. Not here. <laughs> I just had to throw that one in. Yeah. But, um, so, would it be appropriate for Kotoko to set up if uh, something for their players, to be contributing for their players? Are they obliged to do it yes i i will start by saying yes even though i do not know the kind of registration that kotoko is registered as, but okay. i believe it's a company limited it's a limited liability company mm -hmm. or is a registered company under the scheme of the laws of ghana okay. and for that reason i don't think there's any team that is not registered that the gfa is dealing with exactly and the second thing is that how do they pay their players do they pay them on a monthly basis do they, do they have a salary that they draw every month? Or do they have, have they come to an agreement that, okay, when we win a match, then we'll pay you this? Do they and take salaries? Exactly. The moment they take salaries, then they are obliged by the law okay. to contribute first year and second year, which are mandatory. And so this is another area. Like I said, we, we started discussions with some of these uh, groups. And so it's an area that we are concentrating on because we realize that these are areas that um, for lack of knowledge, for lack of education, mm -hmm. a lot of people are doing things that they, they do not know is wrong. But of course, the law, if the law is there, you cannot plead, yeah. uh, you know, in a sense that I didn't know that I had to do this and that. But uh, I, I believe every club, and I think the GFA should even become one of the regulators in, in the sense that they must encourage. I'm sure they have committees that look up to these things. Those committees, the welfare committee, whatever they are, should see to it that every team has registered. We can actually set up a football mm -hmm. scheme or clubs scheme, a master trust scheme for clubs in Ghana, where every club you know contributes into it, and you'll be amazed at what comes out of it. Because my my difficulty here or my caution here is that you see, they are in a very risky profession. A profession where this morning you get up very well, you are jogging and happy. Tomorrow you get onto the field, somebody knocks you down, and that's it. Your leg is gone and your profession is gone. Mm. But if these people are contributing, and I mean, sadly, you hear some of them on radio and television, you know, old players who are complaining that even what to eat is a problem yeah. because they are not on any pension. Some of these people have actually played for our national teams. Yeah. The last time I heard there was a group like that that was complaining that they won the national, they won the cup for Ghana and they were promised some, some cars and yeah. the cars have not come. Some said they even collected their cars from them. And, I, and now virtually many of them live you yeah. know, uh, by begging or on the benevolence of other people, which shouldn't have been the case. If all those years we had made sure that they were rolled onto a pension scheme, they were contributing onto those schemes. Therefore, at the end of the day, they would have something to retire to. So I strongly think that the GFA, their welfare committee, or whatever they call them, they should be interested in it. They should, they should even come up, you know, with rules and regulations that will, that will, that will force, if I should put it that way, that will force teams to register their players on such pensions. Okay, and for the celebrities who do not belong to any association. What do they do in their case? Do they just walk to any trustee and, uh, you know, exhibit interest? Yes. You see, we have what we call the private pension schemes. And these are also provided for within the law. Okay. Where, you know, um, trustees set up private pension schemes, which is a, a tier three, mm -hmm. you know, uh, operated scheme. An individual can decide to contribute into that account any amount that he gets at any time. Mm -hmm. Okay. You can also decide with your trustee that, okay, in order to make it, easy for you. I'll do a banker's uh, order or I'll do 
uh, standing order that mm -hmm. every month an amount of such will be transferred or every quarter such an amount will be transferred for you to manage for me so that when I go on pension, I can take advantage of it, you know. So those schemes are there. <coughs> those schemes are there. And interestingly, <coughs> Excuse me, a lot of people come up and ask about it. Okay. That, oh, I know what my company is doing for me in tier one and two won't be enough. Can I also on my own contribute stuff? And I say, yes. That's, that's the point. We encourage people to do that a lot. Because, look, now I'll tell you this. Let's do just a little math, okay? No, I, I'm not good with math. Don't worry, I'll help you. Okay. Um, every month, you do 100 CDs. Let's even talk about those who are religious people who pay tithe every month, okay? What we are saying is that we've done a study and we found out that you don't have to break your back to raise funds for your pensions. Okay. You can just build a habit of a continuous you know, investment. When you are paying your tithe, when you write a tithe check, write another check for investment. And it shouldn't be so much. Because you don't go back to your church asking them you want your tithe back. You don't go asking them what they've used your tithe for. Okay, if yeah. you do. But normally you don't go by asking them to give it back to you. You pay it. Some of us have paid tithe for over 15 years, over 20 years. No, you ask yourself, if I were paying another type into an investment for my pensions, how much would I have gained by now? And I met a man at um, GRE. He said that he started by doing a banker's graph, a banker's order, you know, on his accountants. Every man just sent something into treasure bill for me and actually forgot about it. He was amazed. He's about, he's about two years to retirement. He was amazed the last time he checked how much he has accumulated in that account. He couldn't believe it. Okay. And I said that, look, it's, you and I spend more than 100, 150, 200 Ghana on credit every month. Many of it, Facebooking and chatting. Yeah, socially, we get excited. But have we asked ourselves if we're putting half of that amount consciously into a private pension scheme? And in five years, in 10 years, how much that would result, you'd be amazed. So, yes, for the celebrities, you see, you cannot be a celebrity forever. Yeah. That's the thing. There are times where you go up and you come down they have their ups and downs you know so now that you're making all the money i mean you know you're one of them so you know um, how much they make they should be thinking about saving for the future and we we can we can give them a we can give them a beautiful product that they will be flexible uh, you don't have to contribute every time as and when you have it for example i've contributed for two years and uh, the next year i'm not in good standing nobody forces you to continue it's not like a uh, a contract where every month you have to do a contribution. If in a particular year, in a particular season, you are not too good, you can halt it. Meanwhile, whatever you have contributed still is being invested for you. And so you are, you are also the same way. Around. Okay. But do you have any of these celebrities walking into your office? No, not yet. I, not I think, yet. you see, for them, you see, there's a, it's a mindset, oh, Nana. It's a mindset where people think that they will never grow. They will never fade out. fade out. They are always going to be evergreen. They are always going to be young. You know, you get that feeling all the time thinking that, yo, this is me on top and it's never going to change. But, you know, anything could happen to them. Anything yeah. could happen to them. You know, where your career then takes a nosedive or you, you still at a level where you're not going in, you're not getting the juicy contracts anymore because you're, you're growing. They want younger, new you know, exciting, uh, you know, uh, celebrities or artists are coming up, yeah. they are taking your places. And uh, I mean, look at the musicians that we have always known. You know, I don't want to mention names, but gradually they, they are fading out. The young ones are taking over. And so if these people had not prepared or have not prepared themselves, mm -hmm. and the, 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 yesterday I had a story about one of the, the musicians that they claim that now he's taking Trotro and and all those things. I was like, wow, this is somebody when we're growing up or in the mid, you heard him rapping here and there. Of course, it does not mean that taking Trotro is wrong, wrong. Yeah. but the story is talking about who he was and that they, didn't, they never thought that he would get to the stage so where... So his status has changed. Exactly. But who, who leads these people? Who, sh who should, you know, lead the way for them? And uh, we've always been... Lo everybody looks at somebody. So let's look at ourselves. It's about you. Now, for those who, are, who belong to associations, I believe that associations must take the, the forefront, like the music guys, the, I think they have actors, girls, yes. and all these Quite associations. Quite inactive, but yes. <laughs> you. <laughs> all these groups should become interested as part of the services they're providing to the associations. They should walk into our offices or they should get our contact from TV3, and we, we can design custom-made schemes for them. Ah, That's the beauty like of it. I like that one. Yes. Custom made. Custom made. Because you see, the law when it comes to tier three, 
the law makes it very flexible for you to sit down with a group or sit down with associations and agree what is comfortable for them. We don't want to burden them and say every month pay this. No. And we also don't want to create a situation where it becomes a burden for them to create. Uh, so as and when you have the funds? As, and, as, for, the, as for the informal sector, because we know they don't earn regular salaries, as and when the quantums have not also been decided. Now you can decide to put in. So far as you can make that contribution, it is acceptable by the law. The law does not put any cap on how much you can contribute and how often you can contribute. It. And how involved can you be if, for instance, you're going for the uh, third tier? Um, do you decide what the money should be used for, where it should be invested? Or you the, don't have a the say? NPRA, the NPRA has a, um, an investment structure. Okay. Yeah, you, you mentioned the and, other day. And they, they decide within the metrics, even the range within which you can invest a given amount of money at a point in time. Because of the so, risks. Because of the risk. That's yeah. basic. And they make sure that you rebase at the end of every month. Because okay. if you're supposed to do a maximum of maybe 70% in government bonds and you're doing 75%, they will take you on. Because what it means is that you are, they sat down and did the calculations and realized that these are the divisions that we should accept. So you just don't go up and decide the way you want to manage it. Okay. But the other thing about the tier three or the informal sector schemes are that they even have two accounts. They have an investment account and then they have a pensions account. Right. So what it means is that for people at the musical level and all that, when you are contributing into the investment account and also into... So you're yeah, paying twice? No, just in case. I mean, we can decide that any amount you pay would do 10% into investment and ah. then 90% into the, pension. the pension. Because the pensions, you can only touch it after five years for the informal sector. Mm -hmm. And then the investment accounts, you can go in there anytime you need some money to, 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 to release an album, to do a right. video, and you've contributed for a while. You can come into your trustee and say, look, you know what, I'm releasing a new album and I want to do a video, mm -hmm. or I want some money. Then from your investment account, it can give you some money for you to go and do a business with it. Okay, now let's move away from the showbiz personalities and look at employees. Yeah. Okay. How engaged are they in the third tier? The third tier, um, a lot of employees get engaged through their employers, as exactly. again, because uh, for the former sector, a lot of them have what we call the provident funds. Mm -hmm. And so the, the law also allows you to migrate your provident funds into the tier three. The advantage is that you get a tax exemption because like the, the law says that uh, up to a maximum of 35% of your basic pay that you contribute into pension, yeah. you don't pay taxes on it. I'd like to explain this a little further. What it says is that, for example, you earn 100 cities a month, and you've decided that you want to contribute your 18.5 in tiers 1 and 2, which is mandatory, and they want to do an extra 16.5 in tier 3. That gives you a total of 35%. The law says that before your salary is taxed, that 35 or 35 CDs of your 100 CDs will be taken away before taxes are applied on the rest. Okay. So what it means is that you are paying less taxes because the 35 percent doesn't get to be taxed. Okay. okay, so you get more like a tax exemption. Then it is spread into tiers one, tiers two, and tiers three. You get your your um, your provident fund into the third tier. There are certain binding rules. The first one is that you cannot touch it until you've contributed for 10 years. Okay, if you have to touch it then you're going to pay back to government. They didn't continue another one year. My money is gone. They've spent all their money. No, no. It doesn't work like that with pensions. With pensions, if you start contributing and you break, your money keeps getting invested right. for you until right. you come back and continue. Because the setup gives you your own private PIN and everything. So, mm -hmm. And they'll continue to give you statements every quarter so that you know that the investment is still ongoing. Ah, very interesting. Okay. Um, uh, so yes, they can actually start doing personal. Okay, so um, Elsie, if you are, if you just had Della, you can contribute, you know, with your allowance. Okay. Um, Ajeman, Besiako wants to know. Bediako, I'm sorry, wants to know if um, he can also set up an, a, a pensions account for his teenage daughter. That's an interesting area. That's an inter I, I, why rather does he not set it up for himself and make the teenage daughter a beneficiary of that account? Okay, so that's that's also provided. I that's a yes. yes. Okay, all right. Now, we have addressed the showbiz and the sports personality. So, if you're a celebrity out there, as the last said, you will fade out at some point. Yeah, we will all fade out at some but point. But no, that is what it is. It's not yeah, like I'm it is, yeah, it is, a it's theory a fact. or something. <laughs> it's a statement of fact. Yeah, we will fade but out. Let them all. speak to me, okay? Yeah. I mean, let them speak to me. We, we, we can Maybe you should make the Pensions Alliance number available. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So or your number, whichever. Yes, they can. They can get us on zero two four four, 
6222238. Very simple number, actually. All right. Now, we've talked about the first, second, and third tier. Yeah. Okay. Um, last week, you know, when you left, we, I received a call in the newsroom. And one gentleman said that he went to check because you mentioned that you should always go and check what, whether your employer is paying yeah. for you. Yeah. And uh, he actually followed it up to right. go and check and realized that there had been some discrepancies. What should he do? When there, there are such discrepancies, first of all, talk to your employers. Okay. Let them know this water. Sometimes they actually might have paid, but doing the capturing from either the SNIT end or from the trustees end, there could have been a problem. No, so he, he did all that. And found, and out, found that out that the employer was not paying. Good. Now, if now with the MPRA, if the employer is not paying, just go to the MPRA's offices. Do a formal complaint. Give them your name, your details, the name of the company, the year or the period in which you work with them. And the NPR will take it up and retrieve your money for you. And even could it get that company. Your job? It should, they would dare not. Okay. They would dare not because they themselves know that it is a criminal offense mm -hmm. to, you know, deduct money from an employee's salary with the intention of mm -hmm. paying it into their pensions and not pay it. They know. And they can actually be prosecuted for that action. Okay. Yeah. So let's talk about today. I want to focus on Pensions Alliance. What exactly do you offer? To, to customers. Lovely. Uh, we are licensed pensions trustee company and we've looked at our rules and all that. We offer pensions trustee management, we offer administration, we offer uh, governance and consultancy. We we are exciting our clients okay. and uh, if there are any companies out there who are having difficulties with getting set up with pensions or haven't registered for their tier two uh, just give our numbers. They, they should get in touch with us. We have a very simple, within two days, we'll get you registered and we'll make it easy for you to contribute and we will give you your statements as you expect. We will be at your, I mean, anytime you have an issue, we want us to, we even do other services. We actually have a training oh, on retirement okay. preparation and uh, I'm sure from next we'll begin to look at some of the issues within mm. how people prepare to retire and what they should do, what they should look out for. What are some of the shocks that they could be faced mm. with? And these are training we give for free for our clients. Uh, we've, we've, we've moved around with a, a lot of them, and they're very excited about our services. So we are asking all those who are listening to us who have not signed up yet to call us up and let's. Zero two four four six two 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 three. That's, yeah. that's nice. Okay, so uh, Della, thank you very much. You know, you've raised a very important issue. I think next week we'll concentrate on preparing to retire. Yeah. What exactly do you do yeah. when you know you have just about eight years to go? Anna, when you've just started work. You should prepare. I'm telling you. You don't wait till it's a whole lifestyle you're 50. Journey. No. Okay. That's where the shocks come in. We'll talk about all right. that. Thank right. you very much, Dela. Thank you for Unfortunately, having. I can't go through uh, the, the, the questions that I'm receiving for you, several of them. You probably and would we just are very have to forward it to us. We'll gather people and get at, it. At a fee. Well, we're going to talk about that. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you very much for your Thank time. You. Okay, Thank we have you. more to come. Stay with us.